Hello YouTube, today we're going to be going over how to multiply two vectors, so there's two ways you can do that. You have the dot product when you're dealing with scalar, and you have the cross product when dealing with vectors. So stay tuned for the vector uh, portion for cross product, but today we're going to be going over dot product for scalar. Um, and this is the formula we're going to be using, uh, pretty much the magnitude of u vector times the magnitude of v vector times cosine of theta. So let's see what that actually means with a few examples. So if you have a u vector and a v vector, and let's draw what those out look, or what they look like graphically. So you're going right with a magnitude of 2, and uh, you're also going right with a magnitude of 3. So this arrow is a little longer. Um, so if you use this formula, so since you're not going at any uh, angle, um, cosine is 0, or uh, the degree angle is 0, uh, so you're going completely horizontal. Um, then you simply take the magnitude of those vectors, and since it's going in the same direction, uh, then that means that with no angle, it's just simply the component, which is would be 2 times 3, which is 6, times the cosine of 0, which is 1, and you get 6. So that's a pretty basic example, and again, you can draw like uh, that full line there, but let's do another example. This time uh, we have the... Um, one, one going in the x direction, one going in the y direction, so 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Um, and this is kind of what they look like, so u direction is going right, v vector is going up. Now using this formula, you know cosine of 90 is going to be a degree angle. And if you know cosine of 90 is, is uh, 0, so you take those magnitudes and you get the product to be 0. Uh, going back here, um, if you have a positive uh, dot product, that means the vectors are in alignment. They're kind of going with each other. And if you have a negative dot product, that means they're kind of going in opposing directions. They're not quite um, in the same way here. But now that this is zero, pretty much just means that they are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. Um, and therefore, their product is zero. So now let's have another example. We have 2i and 3i plus 4j. Again, here we have our formula. Now we've got to draw this out a little bit. So I drew the v vector, so I'd be going right 3 and then up 4. Uh, I also put in the u vector just to show that where it looks relative to it. So it's 2 thirds of the way there since it is 2. Um, and then that means the hypotenuse would be 5. So that would be its magnitude. But let's talk about the degree angle. Well, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So you simply do opposite over hypotenuse, take the inverse tangent. Um, and you can, that's how you figured out the, the hypotenuse, by the way. Um, and then, because it's 3, 4, 5. Um, and then you get the degree angle. You get 53.13. And, again, you take your magnitude of u, which is 2, since it's going in the same direction, no d degree angle change there, times the magnitude of the vector. So that was 5. That was the hypotenuse. So which direction it's going, I kind of, the magnitude, how fast, kind of, you think of it as speed. Um... And then you multiply those two together and add the times cosine of theta, and you get 6. So we note one thing to note is that we can also get an easier way of doing this um, by multiplying the components of u and v in vector notation. So taking the same example, the j component of u would be 0. So you simply to multiply them, you do 2 times 3, and then you add 0 times 4. Uh, taking the i's and the j's and uh, multiplying those together, and then you still get the same answer. So now that we know this shortcut, let's jump into using this example here. Um, so we want to multiply the two. So using the shortcut method, you would have 2 times 6 plus 5 times 3. Add those up, and you get 27 as your uh, product. So this is much easier, obviously, than using the figuring out what the angle is, and it will save you a lot of time later. Um, if you're under a time crunch, probably for an exam. So, now let's do the physics application. So we have a force of 100 newtons applied in the direction of the U vector, and it moves a box 10 meters across the horizontal floor. How much work is done? So, then we figure out what the force is, and since the force is going to be represented as a vector, uh, we have the direction, which is the U, um, and it would work how far, how, how much is the force? Well, it's 100, so uh, since we want a vector, that's force times distance, or, or since a vector is something with both direction and magnitude, our magnitude is 100, and our, vec or our direction is the u vector. 
So now that we have that, you simply distribute the 100 and you get 60i plus 80j. Now, we only, and one thing that's really important to note, that the, we only, uh, the only component of the force is in the same direction as the d vector, which is the distance that we're traveling, um, to contribute to the work. Um, that's simply a physics concept with work, and as you are probably well aware, that work is force times distance. So we're going to take these two vectors, um, so we have our force vector times our distance vector, which is in the brown there, um, that's how far we're going. Now we're only going to multiply the uh, components that are going in the same direction. So only the I component since we're moving it, the box to, across the horizontal floor to the right. So that would only be 60 times 10, which is 600. And the first component's in newtons, the second component is in meters. And work is measured in joules, which are newton meters. So this mathematically makes sense as well, um, the physics aspect. So what if we did the same thing but we had the box moving on an inclined plane in this direction so you would simply do the same thing for your distance so now your direction since it's inclined your magnitude would be 10 now and your direction would be your v vector um, which is given and then you simply distribute and get your distance vector but now you need the force times the distance to get your work um, and we can convert that into uh, this vector notation using what we have here. Um, so 6080 was our force, so made it just 60 comma 80, since we could say 60i plus 80j or 6080 in the vector notation, times the distance which we just figured out above, and you simply uh, the shortcut method that we use, now we're using our knowledge from the previous part of this video, where you simply multiply these two components, so the first component, 60 times 20, 120 over 13, then you add 80 times 50 over 13, using that shortcut we mentioned earlier, and you get 600, excuse me, 861.5 joules. Now notice that this is actually more joules than if it were simply on a horizontal plane, so we required more work um, due to that incline. So, hope this helped with examples um, in trying to figure out how the basic mathematics work and then using it in a physics aspect. But definitely hoped this helped and happy practicing and just keep keep on at it and you'll figure things out along the way. The more practice, the better you'll get.